In this flicker, we continue our tour of Dawson City's historical sites with Parks Canada's heritage interpreter, Gabby. This time we learn about the leisure side of early Dawson with stops at the Palace Grand Theatre and the Red Feather Saloon. First up, we explore Arizona Charlie's Entertainment Showcase, the Palace Grand, featuring melodramas, acrobats, trained dogs, and even dancing bears. It first opened its doors on July 18, 1899. So Gabby, this here is the Palace Theater. Palace Grand Theater. Palace it's Grand, Grand Theater. Theater. Awesome. And so I'm familiar with it. You know, I was, uh, I remember having myself uh, a whiskey or two yeah. right here at this bar. And it was uh, run by a, a good friend of mine. Tell us about Arizona Charlie, who I actually um, first met on the Chilkoot. Uh, coming up in 97. He came up in 97 yeah. with yes, me as well. Yes, he did. He came up in 97, staked some lucrative claims, and made it rich. One of the few who did. He was quite a fellow old day. He was a sharp shooter. He was larger than life. He, he was. was. An entertainer. So on the trail there, when we uh, uh, first uh, met, you know, exchanging some stories about our, our desert home. But, um, so maybe tell us a little bit about when the Palace Theater open and, and what it was all about. Well, he took three months to build this theater. It was uh, in 1899 and in July it opened up. The opening night was about 800 people who showed up. 50 cents got you a cigar and a free show. That's right. People would gamble and drink here and then they trooped down and watched the show and it was quite a hit. It was very exciting. Yeah, but uh, some of those shows uh, just uh, had a lot of, uh, a lot of a lot of ladies dancing in those shows, weren't there? There were ladies were dancing, like... but there was also boxing matches, there yep. were plays, there was vaudeville. In fact, there was even a gentleman who hung himself every night, and he was very popular. Yeah, I remember that. Long Neck Louie. Long Neck Louie, yeah. and, and uh, he, he had something uh, rigged he, up he had that something uh, right, yeah. saved himself from, uh, from really getting a hanging. Uh, People loved Long Neck Louie. Uh, Long Neck Louie. Yeah. I'd forgotten about Long Neck Louie. My goodness, whatever became... Well, you, I, I asked you like you're from my time, <laughs> but I wonder, wonder whatever became of Long Neck Louie. So, I don't know. So, uh, now, and don't think uh, you're going you're gonna to upset me, but... Uh, how long did the Palace Grand run? Um, I, I kind of ran from for about one year. Yeah. Uh, the gold rush was over. People moved on. Charlie sold it in 1901, and it became a Shakespearean theater at that time. And then a Dawson's first movie theater in 1917. 1917. Yeah, and then well, it shut down in the. So that's beyond my. I was already. That's way beyond. So they they started showing these they flicker did, shows. They did silent at first, and then talkies later. My goodness, wow, that's, and how long did that last? Uh, that was several years, and then it became a dance hall again, and then it shut down in the 1940s. Uh, 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 in the I'm 19th. telling you the future. You are telling me the future, and uh, I will, um, I'll try not to uh, get myself all wrapped up on that. I've been, I've been getting people to, uh, uh, if I, I tell you, you know what happens to me, I don't want to know. Uh, uh, I don't know either, so uh, you're safe. Well, good, good. Now, um, if you don't mind, I just, just one shot of whiskey um, will do me until we, you know, move on. I could whip my whistle a little All dusty right. out there. I'll get right on that. I appreciate it, Gabby. Thank you. This 1962 reconstruction of the original 1899 Queen Anne Revival Theater is a classified federal heritage building. So, Gabby, uh, tell me about... Um, Charlie's uh, vision here for the palace grant. Well, Charlie was a showman and he wanted elegance as well as practicality. And he had traveled the world and he loved the Parisian opera houses. So he modeled the suspended balconies here after that, the lace curtains, just to give that elegance to the theater. But the wood, of course, and the, the heated stoves, that's all very Klondike. So he married yeah. the two architectures together. Yeah, uh, that, that's kind of a kind of what they call a fusion. A fusion. Uh, a fusion. He now, uh, and it, again, it's still here. It's still it's here. It's been saved by Parks Canada. Parks Canada. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, now, uh, that's our mandate: protect and present. And it does my heart good that we've got um, folks like y'all that do that. So, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Parks. Thanks, Parks Canada. Thanks, <laughs> Parks <pleasure>. Canada. <laughs>
The original Palace Grand Theater fell into disrepair during the 40s and 50s. Saved by the Klondike Visitors Association, it was given to Parks Canada in 1961. Rebuilt and reopened in 62, the first season featured the premiere of the musical Foxy, starring Burt Lahr, the Wizard of Oz's Cowardly Lion. The now 60-year-old replica continues as a vivid reminder of the Klondike Gold Rush and is a featured stop on many Parks Canada tours. I was always uh, taken, of course, by, um, by the ladies that, uh, that put on the shows here. And, and as I've said before, the, um, many of the ladies, well, I would say almost every one of the ladies that was able to get themselves up here to the Klondike, were uh, were ladies of, uh, of of no simple means. These were ladies that um, were were strong and and mm. strong willed, weren't they? In most Absolutely, cases. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us about the ladies working here at the Palace Grand. Well, here at the Palace Grand, you had ladies who would dance with gentlemen uh, for a dollar a dance, and they got a percentage. Now they would dress just like me. It was a legitimate job, and it was every night from midnight till eight in the morning. Sometimes 160 dances. They would dance with a gentleman so that he could feel a lady in his arms. All above board, all legitimate. Women here had a lot more freedom than they would down south with the Victorian values. There were women miners, business women. It was a pretty good time and an interesting time for women up here in the Klondike. It was, and you know, I knew um, Miss Mulroney, ah, and yes. uh, she was she was not to be tussled with. That was a tough cookie, that she one. She sure was. She was one of the richest people and women here in the Klondike at one point. At one point, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course, um, yeah, Ethel Berry. Uh, Ethel Berry, absolutely. She an yep. uh, so amazing lady. Yes, and, that's right. Uh, and um, and then mother. Others. Mother who came up, uh, she was, a, I called her mother, she was a seamstress, came up looking for her son. Right, she did, and she had that chillicoo with the sewing machine strapped to her back. Goodness so she sake. could make a bit of money while she was looking for her son. My goodness, but yeah. you know, it, it, it may strike some folks today kind of thinking it's, it's funny that you'd spend, um, you know, a good bit of money, you know, a dollar for, you know, in our day was, uh, was not, you know, a drop in the bucket, and that you just spend that on a want to dance with a lady, but um, that would take you, and I, I, I did that uh, uh, many, many a time, and it would, it would almost take you to another place because everything was kind of rough and, and dirty and, 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 and smelly. And families um, were left behind. You were lonely. Yeah. People worked really hard That's on That's right, and, yeah. and some of us, all, all we wanted was that dance. That's all. That was uh, some fellas, you know, but... Some fellows, that was enough. Uh, Got to keep a G, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, in the Palace Grand here, that was all it was. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, what a what a fine place. Uh, well, Gabby, for me and for many people here, well, just coming into Dawson City, um, when things were uh, getting built and getting big, um, and at one point, um, they tell me. We were just here, and we were just living, and trying to make ends meet. But at one point, Dawson City was uh, the, the second big, biggest city on the West Coast. Is that oh, right? West of San, uh, west of Winnipeg, and north of San Francisco. It was the largest city, actually. It, yeah. It was uh, a, lot of, I, a lot of people. A lot of people, and yeah. I just um, it's hard to it's hard to reckon, you know, thinking back on that. But it's so. It's still so nice, and I gotta say that um, there's still so many remnants of it, like the Palace Theater here. That's right. But it's just a bit calmer, and it just has a has an easier feel to it. And uh, and I say that because you know, folks should get here, should get up here to you know, get on up here, get up to um, Dawson City, up to the Yukon. I keep telling. Located at the corner of Third Avenue and Princess Street. The Red Feather Saloon is a fine reminder of the many Gold Rush era drinking establishments. A vital respite from small airless cabins and a necessary gathering place, saloons played an important role in early Dawson. Welcome to the Red Feather Saloon. Please enjoy the this looks familiar, I can tell you that much. And, yeah. uh, I appreciate you lining them up for me, man. You're welcome. Uh, Unfortunately, we ran, we ran out yesterday. So. <laughs> All came out of there was it. Sure I don't know what the world See that how old that is. It's our, an artifact. Mm. 
<laughs> it would seem so. Well, uh, I figure this ain't a place where you, this is more of a, uh, a, a preservation uh, uh, house. This is not a preservation saloon where you can show people how it was. Exactly. This is modeled to 1904. Uh, when men were going in and out of the gold fields and they had a place to come, not just to drink, but also to socialize. It was really important to spend time with people because you're lonely out there and hard working hard. So That's right. That's these, these saloons fulfilled that function as well. They, they sure did. And, and this would have been the place where uh, if, you, if you found a bit of gold out there, you uh, come in here and you'd uh, tell the other uh, Tell us about it. Maybe, that was the code. Maybe was, buy a round or two. Maybe play know. some poker in the private booths here. You that's know? right. You might that's celebrate. Right. You might cry. You never know. That's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, I, you never do. Maybe there was more gold out there, fellas. Drink up. I've uh, found me a nugget. I'll yeah. tell you where it is. Right, and right, have right. At it. That was the code. You had to tell everybody you found gold. Right. Uh, so that they can also have a chance. That's right, and uh, sometimes they also strike it rich out there. Sometimes there was it was all t uh, taken, and in many ways, uh, most was taken by the time those folks got here. By '98, it was pretty much taken, absolutely. Uh, so a lot of people milled about, maybe started business, maybe waited for the next gold rush, rush which was '99 in Nome, Alaska. Yep, yep. They no. moved on. I remember that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I tried my. I went over to Nome, Did but uh, yeah. uh, I missed Dawson, so I came back. I missed the Yukon and uh, came back here. This is this has become my home. Uh, tell us about the Red Feather. So the Red Feather was again a place where you could come to socialize. It was uh, built in 1901. It was open till 1915. Uh, so for that time period, this looks very fancy to us, but this was a working man's bar. And people were able to come and hang out. Wait, are, are you telling me, Miss Gabby, that uh, when I make it back to my time, I ain't, yeah, I ain't got but three years left to enjoy the red feather? 1915? You better drink up there. Drink up, I'll pretend that I'm drinking <laughs> up. In 1973, Parks Canada, utilizing their expert historic restoration skills, revitalized a structure that had saw time as a garage and a storage shed since its closure as a working saloon in 1915. And how many people you get here? How many people do you think you get here in a summer? Well, it tends to vary. Uh, I believe there are times when we have at least 60,000. It just depends on the year, it depends what's going on. In the fall, they'll compile all those statistics, and they're different every year, but we sure get a lot. And not many are dressed like you or me, are they? No, we are unique. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. They're all dressing kind of funny in those yeah. cut off. The pants that I've... Showing a lot of skin. I when I, when, when I, at first, I thought they'd done lost half their pants. I, uh, I don't know what was it. We're on. not allowed to show our ankles. I don't know what's going on nowadays. Well, and you know, you know what I like about your, um, your, your preservation um, spots here, your um, museums, is uh, we got some good wood. We got some good iron here, and I don't see any of that uh, that that funny stuff that everybody oh. seems to like. What's that called? Plastique? That's right, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Parks yeah. Canada does try to be as authentic as we can, and when we restore something, so we have lots of photographs to go by, uh, and we have a lot of artifacts in our collection. So we definitely try to recreate or preserve as much as we can. Sure is nice. Mm -hmm. Well, Gabby, this has been a treat, and I still, I think you're um, fooling me. I think you're from the past as well as I am. You got enough, you got more knowledge than most folks today have about the past. You know, I am multi-dimensional. That's right. You know, you're, you know about the past like, uh, like us time travelers uh, do, uh, Gabby. But uh, I really appreciate you taking us through these buildings. That, um Sometimes, as I said before, it's it's a a wonderful time you have in a lot of ways, and and you you preserve so much of my time, and uh, but it just makes me feel a little closer to my time, and I'm glad and we could help. It makes me feel it makes me feel nice and kind of kind of comfortable, and I appreciate that. Okay. So um, so thank you for uh, the tour. You're welcome. And, uh, You're welcome. Well, let's. Uh, <laughs> Well, 
we've got nothing there. I know. It's okay. symbolic. It's yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll just we'll we'll toast sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. It's just um, sarsaparilla. But um, so get a. Oh wait, Gabby, why don't you uh, why don't you say the my line there at the end? You got to get on up here.